July and the temperatures are rising. So let's take flight with this month's little bit different block. Remember, these blocks all finish at six inches by nine inches. So they're a rectangle, which means we have some fun design options. And this month we're making simple flying geese and I planned a special project. Stay tuned. Let's make the flying geese units for the flight block, part of the Little Bit Different collection. This pattern is free until the end of July 2024 at truebluequilts.com. Okay, I'm going to organize my pieces and I've got my the big portion of the flying geese set up as red, white, and blue. So I had them layered when I cut and I needed to get them organized. And the reds are gonna have white corners it's all a progression. And then the white is going to have a blue corner and the blue is going to have a red corner so that when you make the flying geese, this part connects and makes that chevron look on the other units. So again, I need to get these separated out and then it will be very easy to chain piece my units together. When I sew, I am going to be sewing along the diagonal of these squares. I make the squares half as big as my finished rectangle. So if I have a four inch or a six inch base rectangle for my flying geese, then I know I want a two or a three inch square plus the half inch of seam allowance. And all of this is explained in the pattern, which is a free download on my website. So we will get these uh, units laid out so that we are ready to go. Now, if it makes you more comfortable, you can mark your squares. Just take a marking pencil, pen, whatever you use to mark your fabric, and draw a line on that diagonal from corner to corner. I actually mark my machine bed with a Sharpie, or you can use the quarter inch seam tape for that mark. Getting ready to sew. So I can just line this up and I, I'm eyeballing to make sure that my bottom triangle is right in line with that needle position. And as I sew, I can make sure I am lined up with the mark on my machine bed. And we're gonna go right through the tip of that rectangle. Now, I start sewing on this long straight edge of my rectangle and not on that corner because triangles have a very bad habit of getting sucked down into your machine bed. And I don't want that to happen. And it's less likely if you work on a longer edge versus putting the tip of a block right under the needle. So we have our first sections on those rectangles. And I was working with batik, so right sides together didn't matter, but now I've got some um, printed fabric. And yes, I do mix my prints with my batiks, no problem. So I wanna make sure I flip that over and got the right sides together. Okay, I'm gonna get this first step all sewn together and then we will press and trim for step two of the flying geese. So I have my first step done. I have pressed towards the corner. 
So even on these units that have white fabric, I have pressed towards the corner, but we don't want three layers of fabric right there in our finished quilt, so we need to trim. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open that back up and we're gonna cut this bonus triangle off. Uh, some people like to go ahead and sew another uh, seam there so that they've got uh, their bonus half square triangles ready to go. I sew those later um, as leader enders. So what I want you to do is grab a ruler that has a really nice quarter inch mark. And I highly recommend the little bit different ruler from True Blue Quilts because I had this ruler designed with the markings for the six by nine blocks and it has this wonderful quarter inch marking dotted line really bright and clear all the way around the ruler. So you can just put that quarter inch right on your seam and trim away from your unit. And then your flying geese corner is already pressed to sew in place. Now, if you don't have your little bit different ruler, but you're a fan of paper piecing, then you may have an add a quarter ruler. These rulers have a lip right here and it's a quarter inch already built into the ruler. So I like to just set that down so that the lip is right on my quarter inch. And again, it's really easy to trim those excess layers away. And we've done our pressing first so that we are ready to go with that. So let me quick get this stack of flying geese step one trimmed and we will be ready to add the other corner. Okay, we've got these all trimmed. We're ready to add the second square. So these are the same size as our first one. And I had talked about sewing from the long edge of the rectangle. That may or may not work with your machine because we've got that seam. We're starting right on that seam bulk and your machine may not like that. So this is one instance when I do go ahead and start from the corner and I have to make sure my pieces are lined up straight with that needle. I'm watching the mark on my machine bed and it works just fine. One of the things I like to do when I am piecing like this is I switch my throat plate. I've got what's called a single stitch throat plate that I can put on my machine. And since the hole is much smaller, it keeps that fabric from getting eaten up there. Sometimes we we find the tips of our half square triangles get chewed up by the machine if they get sucked down in there and this one didn't because of that single stitch throat plate. So it's much easier to start right on the corner of your block with that in place. And that is it for step two. I'll keep sewing these units together and then we will do our second round of press and trim. I will be pressing this the same way. I'm gonna go ahead and press first and then I will trim those excess layers with my add a quarter ruler just like I did for the first corner. And then we will have our red, white, and blue flying geese units to put together. Okay, we are ready to sew our block together. This unit with a large triangle in the center and two corners is your flying geese unit. And they are usually put together in multiples and lots of different patterns use this basic block. We are putting three of them together to make our six by nine flight 
block for the little bit different block of the month. And I've got it set up with red, white, and blue, and they make that chevron there, so you match your colors on the corners. And to sew these together, you simply, you know, put, put them right sides together and sew. Now, I took the middle section and turned it over onto the bottom section. But what I actually want to do to sew this is flip it over because I am going to aim right for that intersection so that or or just to the outside the raw edge of my block just behind that X so that I don't cut off my points so even if you don't have your full quarter inch seam allowance you can make it just scant there and keep your points and and not have blunted uh, flying geese units. So I do use the quarter inch guide on my sewing machine, but as I crossed that point, I was making sure I was just inside that X. And you can see I've still got my nice crisp point there. And I will repeat the process with this last unit. Get that lined up. And I can tell I am inside of the X, so all good. So there is our flight block in our red, white, and blue. Stay tuned and we will add these units to our Quilt of Valor panel. If you're looking for more Quilts of Valor ideas, especially incorporating panels, check out this video next.